So you've lost weight, but now you're down to that last five to 10 pounds that just won't budge. Trust me, I've been there and I know how frustrating it is. But whether you're trying to peel off that last bit of belly fat to get crazy shredded, or you're just close to your personal goal, but you're stuck, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get that last bit of fat off in four simple steps. So the first step is probably gonna be the least popular step, but also one of the most important steps, and that's making sure you have plenty of patience. Now that you've lost a decent amount of weight, your body's gone through something called metabolic adaptation. So your body's gonna burn less calories than it used to, not only because you've lost weight, so you're carrying around less mass, but especially when you've been dieting a while and you're getting pretty lean, oftentimes your metabolic rate will be slower than what would just be predicted through weight loss alone. But also you're more likely to be more tired, burnt out, you're gonna be more hungry. Your body literally doesn't want you to lose any more weight, so it's gonna do everything it can to keep that from happening. So the leaner you get and the longer you do this, the slower your rate of weight loss is gonna be. But on the bright side, the leaner you are, the more every pound makes a bigger percentage of your total weight so the visual changes are much larger but with that being said to get past this plateau and get that last bit of fat off you need to give your body a reason to let its guard down which is where step two comes in. Now what I'm about to tell you may sound a little crazy, kind of backwards, but hear me out. What you're going to do here is spend some time eating more food and doing less activity. I know that can sound terrifying. Your goal is to lose weight. The problem is you're in a position now where your body's adapted and you need to undo the suppression that's in your metabolism to allow you to make that next push. So what I want you to do is for at least the next two weeks, bring your calories up by around three to 500, reduce your cardio, not your strength training, but cardio and maybe maybe even steps by around one third to one half. And honestly, the longer you can hold here, the better off you're gonna be when you go back into your deficit. And I know this probably sounds weird, especially if you're already maintaining your weight, won't adding calories put you into a calorie surplus and undo all that progress you made. The human body is very complex and dynamic. And what typically happens is you bring those calories up, you give the body some nice recovery, and there's this upregulation that happens to your hormones, metabolism, you start feeling better, you move around more because you have more energy. And what I find is most people roughly maintain during this phase but even if you end up gaining a pound or so don't panic because by eating more carbs the muscle glycogen that has been depleted is now going to start replenishing so it's all going to be water weight and nothing to worry about then once your diet break is done what i typically would recommend is drop your calories by about 150 to 200 from what your calories were before the diet break but the thing is if you don't even know how many calories you're consuming no worries i'm gonna address that right now in step three accountability with your nutrition to me tracking your intake is a no-brainer when you you're stuck and just trying to get a little bit more weight off, knowing how much you eat can be a game changer and you just wanna make sure you're being accurate with things. So if you haven't been tracking, even before you take your diet break, what I would do is take a look at your last week if you at least know what you've been eating and add it all up to see how many calories per day you're actually averaging. Cause you kinda need to know where things have been to be able to make these adjustments. But if you've already been tracking, you know how many calories you're eating and you're finding yourself stuck, the next step is making sure that you're accurately accounting for your intake. We as people just aren't good at accounting for intake. This has been shown in research, even nutritionists tend to be off by a few hundred calories. So make sure you're measuring everything you eat on a food scale using grams, not cups and volume because that's not as accurate. You want to make sure you're accounting for everything, no extra bites and taste, making sure you're accounting for all the little things that you may not pay attention to, like cooking oils, condiments, and all that stuff that's easy to overlook. If you're doing cheat meals, you can easily undo an entire week's worth of deficit. And to make that last push, it can make sense to at least minimize how often you go out because you're not gonna know exactly what's in the food you eat. I'm all about going out. I typically do even when I cut, but if I'm getting to a point where I'm trying to get this shredded, like in this instance, I went the last eight weeks, didn't go out, didn't have any more alcohol. Trust me, I like my weekend drinks as much as the next guy. If you follow me on Instagram, you see me posting them pretty frequently actually, but alcohol is gonna work against you when you're making such a hard push. But also remember, however many calories you're on to end your cut is not what you have to stay on when you're done with your cut. You'll be able to reverse diet and bring your calories back up again. So don't feel like you won't be able to introduce these things back in. And the last thing you can do with your nutrition that can make a huge difference, especially if you're not eating a whole lot of it, and that is getting more protein in. There's actually been research that showed people who ate more calories and more protein lost more body fat than people who ate less calories and less protein. So even if you keep your calories the same, but your protein is low and you bring the protein up keeping calories the same, I've seen plenty of times where just doing that can help you start losing body fat again. So I usually recommend around one gram per pound or whatever your goal weight might be 
you're very close to your goal weight at this point. So I would just use body weight and you can even go maybe 1.1 or 1.2 if you're willing to eat more because it will help with your fat loss goals. Now, step four is what you're gonna do with your exercise and activity as a whole. The biggest thing I always recommend is strength training. I'm actually not gonna get into a big thing about this in this video. I cover it in practically every video I do, but I will briefly touch on it. Strength training is far and away the best thing you can do for fat loss. Long story short, you burn calories during the exercise. You burn additional calories as your body recovers for the next couple days. You burn more calories just having more muscle. So hopefully you're already strength training. If you're not, definitely start adding it in. Understand muscle does have weight though. So weight might not move a lot, but your body composition will do what you're looking for. So don't rely only on cardio. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing any cardio. It's definitely a helpful tool, but if you're trying to push really high intensity cardio, it's gonna have a lot of negatives. It's really tough to recover from. It beats you down. You may find you move around a lot less through other areas of your life. The body has a really good way of forcing you to compensate that energy. So I recommend more lower intensity forms of cardio. Personally, I'd recommend walking. And I find that walking oftentimes actually helps with hunger, whereas more intense forms of exercise oftentimes makes you even more hungry. So especially if you haven't been doing much walking, adding in a half hour to an hour walk most days of the week could have tremendous benefits for reaching that final goal. Now I know I kind of glossed over the strength training side of things and why it's so beneficial. So what I want you to do next is check out this video here and I'll explain why training is so effective and four other ways you can start losing fat faster. So check that out next and I'll see you next time.